Hi everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. A team of anthropologists from the Smithsonian and New York University has published a new study that revises the timeline of human evolution. The study, which also included researchers from the Wenner Gren Foundation, focused on integrating available data on climate conditions into our understanding of how and when humans began to emerge from pre-human ancestors. The researchers concluded that the instability of the African climate of several million years ago was one of the driving forces behind the emergence of the genus Homo, of which modern humans are the only surviving species, from the earlier Australopithecus. The most significant revision in the timeline of human evolution suggested by this new study, which was published last week in the journal Science, is the spacing out of the emergence of definitively human traits. It's been thought that the Homo genus began to emerge beginning at about 2.5 million years ago. But according to this new study, certain traits now associated uniquely with modern humans may actually have first appeared between 3 and 4 million years ago, while others appeared later, say around 1.8 million years ago. In addition to larger body size and bigger brains, one of the most important traits that those earliest humans evolved was the ability to survive on a flexible diet. It's an example of what is arguably the most definitively human quality of all, adaptability. Studies like this one bring our understanding of our origins and of what makes us human into clearer focus all the time, and that is most definitely good news. Next up, here's another example of our ever-expanding understanding of human evolution. This one's more recent, relatively speaking. It turns out that the people of Tibet were able to adapt so well to life at high altitudes thanks in part to a gene that they picked up from another, now extinct, species of human. This particular gene regulates the body's production of hemoglobin. Tibetans have a variation of this gene that makes them better adapted to a low oxygen, high altitude environment. A new study by scientists at the University of California, Berkeley, published in the journal Nature, finds that the gene, called EPAS1, was acquired between 40,000 and 50,000 years ago through interbreeding with another human species, called Denisovans, which is now extinct. DNA analysis found that the version of EPAS1 found in 87% of Tibetans is different than the version of the gene found in most other modern humans, but virtually identical to that found in Denisovans. The high altitude variation of EPAS1 is also found in about 9% of Han Chinese people who are closely related to Tibetans. So far, the high altitude variation of EPAS1 has not been found to occur in humans outside of those two populations. Finally, an international team led by astronomers from the University of New South Wales has discovered the closest Earth-like extrasolar planet yet. The newly discovered planet, designated Gliese 832c, is a mere 16 light years away, with an estimated mass five times that of Earth. It's much closer to its star than we are to the sun, taking a mere 16 days to complete a single orbit, but because that star is a red dwarf, much smaller and cooler than our sun, Gliese 832c receives about the same amount of solar energy from its star as we do from ours. These factors might render Gliese 832c habitable, if not exactly hospitable. Its high mass means it most likely has a dense, heat-trapping atmosphere, which would make it more of a super Venus than a super Earth. But who knows? The astronomers who discovered it reckon it to be the third most Earth-like planet currently known, with an Earth Similarity Index score of 0.81. Earth's score is a perfect 1.0, naturally. The timeline of human evolution is revised. It turns out Tibetans are so well adapted to high altitudes because of a gene they borrowed from another human species and yet another Earth-like, potentially habitable extrasolar planet is discovered nearby. That's the good news. You're so calm and cooperative today. Is anything wrong?